One thing I love about Skyrim modding is the fact that everyone has their own taste in mods and can create a perfect, curated and unique mod list for themselves, making the game look one of a kind. It's fun to see different setups and appreciate them, even when they differ from your own. Today I'm showcasing the cornerstone visual mods in my own setup, which together form the graphics base for my Skyrim and which are absolutely essential to me. This video is split into four categories. Base graphics essentials, environmental overhauls, textures and meshes, and NPC overhauls. We'll begin with base graphics essentials, which includes the NP preset I use and the lighting mods as well as Tinderlod, which together play the most important role in bringing the desired mood and graphical base to the game. Quickly for those who are not familiar with ENB series, it is a customizable graphical modification tool which adds post-processing effects such as depth of field and ambient occlusion to games, making them look quite fancy while eating up your FPS. When I left Aldrim and began modding Skyrim Special Edition, I experimented with different graphical setups. Quickly, I discovered an ENB preset and weather combination that satisfied all my needs. Rudy ENB for Cathedral Weathers. This was perfect, because I enjoy making Skyrim look fantastical and colorful while trying to keep it somewhat realistic. Now, with confidence, I can say that it would take a lot for me to change up from this setup, since to me this weather and ENB preset combo is still looking absolutely incredible and there's just no need for me to change it. While lately I have been admiring graphical setups that are close to the original muted and greenish Skyrim colors, I don't think I'll be switching for a good while. I guess we'll see. Obviously, this is the part which hogs up most of my frames, but nevertheless, I can't play without it. The game just looks so darn good with it. Then of course, we have the amazing interior lighting mod Lux. This mod completely and consistently reworks Skyrim's interior lighting, making it realistic and dramatic. All of the base game, DLC and CC content cells are carefully handcrafted and the focus has been on making them as unique as possible. This mod is essential for my graphical setup and modernizes Skyrim's interior lighting in the best way possible. As the final essential for the base game graphics, we must have Dindalot installed and the level of detail generated. For those who are not familiar with Dindalot, it's an abbreviation of Dynamic Distant Objects LOD. With this tool, you can generate a comprehensive LOD for your entire load order to have the distant objects match perfectly with your mods, such as new trees, buildings, anything that's added and should be seen from far away. This is a definitely a must-have in my graphical setup and improves the look of Skyrim immensely. Now that we have the base covered, we can move on to the environmental overhauls. I have two incredible mods in this category that rarely, if ever, leave my mod list. First we have JK Skyrim, which I can't even begin to describe how much I adore. JK Skyrim is a highly polished, lore-friendly city and town overhaul, enhancing the atmosphere of all of the settlements and expanding their themes with added details. For example, Riverwood has its theme of lumber industry expanded, and same with Rorikstead, but with farming. The town overhauls enhance the immersion, and whenever I for some reason don't have JK Skyrim installed, they feel empty and incomplete. Another must-have overhaul mod is Lux Via. This mod is probably the one I have been using on and off the most since its release in Nexus, but always come back to it. The main feature of Luxvia is reworking the main roads of Skyrim, adding consistent light sources between the settlements, but it also improves the bridges and the sides of the roads with adding many points of interest. This mod overhauls the roads in an immersive way. All the added light source types and objects are clearly connected to the area or hole that they're in, adding on to the environmental storytelling and ambience of the game. It's a joy traveling on foot from one place to another and coming across a reworked crossroads before choosing where to head next. The next section of the video is all about the essential textures and 3D meshes. I'll cover most of the essential texture packs and nature textures and meshes I use, but I won't go into detail of creatures, armors or smaller miscellaneous textures. That's what my modding all textures video series is for, so go check that out if you're interested.
We'll begin with the texture pack that's buried deep in my mod list and gets overridden by other texture mods and so acts as the base texture pack. For some, Noble Skyrim might be a little bit outdated by now, but I still consider this texture pack as the cream of the crop with its clean, dark and consistent aesthetic even though the textures might not be as crisp as with newer texture overhauls. Noble Skyrim overhauls of the architecture and landscape textures, including dungeons and DLCs, but also some of the smaller clutter textures. I have been using this mod for who knows how long, and probably will experiment with other comprehensive texture packs in the future, but for now, it'll keep sitting on its throne on my mod list. Now I'll introduce the texture mods that I overwrite Noble Skyrim with to achieve the look I want for my Skyrim. Let's take a look at Skyland city textures for Markarth, Windhelm and Solitude before overhauling Skyrim's nature with some of the most amazing mods I know. For these three cities, I can confidently say that Skyland textures are some of the best there are. First, we have Skyland Markarth, which completely overhauls the City of Stone with high quality, detailed and realistic textures, which look absolutely incredible. The mod covers interior and exterior architecture, but also the dungeons and metalwork, as well as the ground textures. The moss on the textures looks so good, the cherry on top of the cake. Then we have both Skyland Windhelm and Solitude. I'll give the highest praise to both of these as well. The cities get elevated with these realistic and detailed textures, and the details are sharp and satisfying as well. These city texture packs are the ones I must always use alongside Noble Skyrim, and I think they make a big difference in the visual fidelity. Now that we're visiting the cities, there is another texture mod that I've found I can't play without. And it sounds dramatic, because they're quite literally just doors. But these doors are just something extraordinary. Glorious Doors of Skyrim is simply a must-have mod to overhaul the doors and gates of Skyrim, making them look insanely good and modernized with the new meshes. There is also a new mechanized Dwemer door animation, which is always a joy to open when entering Markarth. Don't skip this one, even though they're just doors. That's it for the cities of Skyrim. We can now proceed to take a little walk in nature, and I'll show you all the mods I absolutely need to have for my forests and environment to make them beautiful. For the landscape textures, I use the Omnibus Terrain Complex Parallax AIO texture pack. This mod covers all the base game terrain textures with high quality parallax enabled textures. This effect gives the textures the illusion of them actually being 3D, which gives a nice realistic touch to the ground. Actually, you can, and I've also been using these textures for some time without the parallax feature at all, but recently turned them on and oh boy, of course the terrain everywhere looks even better now. I can honestly say there's no going back for me now, and the omnibus textures are a must have. Let's see then, I think it's time for my favorite, the mods for the trees and the grass. I must admit that I do change my tree and grass setup from time to time, but there is always a rotation of mods I'm using. For the trees, I've been using fabled forests, and if I'm not using that one, I might be using nature of the wildlands. Fabled Forests has been a great tree mod for me, as it adds tons of huge trees all around Skyrim, making the forests lush and easy to get lost in. The trees look beautiful everywhere in the province, and the models are actually from a great tree mod, Happy Little Trees. By the way, Fabled Forests just got its final update, and it's now completed with new features. Not only does this mod completely transform the game visually, it's also relatively performance friendly compared to many other tree overhauls, and that of course gains it an extra point. As I mentioned, I do rotate my tree and grass mods around, but lately I have been enjoying this specific grass mod a lot. Vinland Grass Patch combines three amazing grass mods together, Skoglendi, Flora Orientalis and Folkvangar, to achieve the most incredible grass composition. But where we save frames with a tree overhaul, we lose with Vinland Grass Patch, as the mod is quite heavy on the performance. But as you guys know, I do value visuals over frames, as long as it's tolerable. I already said it, but this grass mod is absolutely amazing visually, might even be the best I've ever used, adding together all the best parts of these three grass mods. 
achieving realistic and gorgeous grass with adding details such as pine cones and rocks. With this mod, you'll want to spend the whole day touching grass, and you'll want to upgrade your PC too. When it comes to water, water for ENB is never leaving my mod list. As its title suggests, this mod is designed with ENB in mind and takes advantage of its features. Water for ENB is highly customizable for different tastes. By tweaking the settings, you can change the water to be dim or clear, dark or light. There are also optional different colors of water, tropical green and mineral teal in addition to the more realistic blue. Different bodies of water look different from each other with color and movement as they should. Overall, this mod makes the water look so good, I want to reach out to my Skyrim through my screen and touch it. Even swim in it, and I'm not a swimmer. The next mod is on the newer side, enhancing the many waterfalls of Skyrim. Natural waterfalls. This mod does a great job on making the waterfalls look so much better by editing each of the waterfall location in the base game. For me, this mod is absolutely mandatory to complete the look of water in Skyrim. No more of these blocky waterfalls, only the smooth. Of course, now the water flow appears to be less powerful, but if that's a good thing or not, is a matter of preference. My last essential textures and meshes for the environment covers the many mountains of Skyrim. Majestic Mountains reworks the rocks and mountains and makes them definitely majestic when compared to the vanilla textures, which are not my favorite in the game. The effect of this mod can go unnoticed until you try it out yourself. So much of Skyrim's landscape consists of the rock and mountains, so the impact really is huge. And that is why this mod is an essential to complete the look of Skyrim's nature. Now let's take a look at the very important part of the graphics in Skyrim, the NPC overhauls. For the female characters, I have been a long time user of the Bijin series, but I have moved on to the amazing Debella's Blessing mod, even though I do always miss my first love, Bijin Ayla. So, Debella's Blessing, as I said, is amazing. I haven't seen this style of NPC appearance overhaul before. At the same time, they look appropriately worn in the unforgiving world of Skyrim while being reasonably beautiful. I don't mind supermodel NPC replacers, but the happy medium of realistic skin textures and aging while still being easy on the eyes is what Tipella's Blessing achieves on these 233 unique looking women and I absolutely adore that. The reimagination of these characters is superb and their personalities and occupations can be observed from their looks. I have tried many replacers for the female NPCs, and Dibella's Blessing comes out easily on the top for the unique and consistent style of character design. It is actually the only female replacer I need, and that is saying much. My male NPCs in Whiterun are replaced by Sons of Nern Whiterun from the same mother. This mod overhauls the appearance of 42 male characters in the Tundra City, reimagining them completely. These men are rugged, they are clean, they are beautiful, they are young, they are old, they are feminine, they are masculine. The range of the appearances is great to have, bringing variety to these white run NPCs. As with Dibella's Blessing, their looks are realistic and beautifully portray their personality and occupation. The detailing is precise and the character design is just top notch. Just look at Belethor. Perfection. The male NPCs outside of Whiterun are replaced by Pandorables NPCs, males and males too. Pandorable is another modder whose character designs I adore and have showcased in the past. Many of these male NPCs are brutally handsome while maintaining mean mugs and realistic complexions, freckles, scars and wrinkles. The characters do come across as different ages, which adds on to the realism and deepens their portrayal. These NPC replacers are high quality, and I just don't see a world where I don't have them installed. They are simply a must-have for any playthrough for me. For the Kajit, Project JKJ is an essential, full-stop must-have. This mod is the absolute pinnacle of creative, high-quality Skyrim modding. I have extensively showcased this mod in my Kajit video, so if you want a deeper dive into Project Jaka J, check that one out, but here's all you need to know in a nutshell. 
This mod replaces all Khajiit in the game, diversifying them with all kinds of different Khajiit for stock. Especially those who are familiar with the lore are happy to see how there are now 7 additional types of Khajiit in the game, ranging from the Bosmer-like Ohms to the cute Toje, and from the impressive-sized Pahmarath to the shorter Lynx-like Tagirath. I'm a huge fan of this mod, and it's just a delightful addition to Skyrim having more types of Khajiit in the game while being lore-friendly. Thank you for watching the video and a big thank you to my supporters at Patreon, especially my tavern's legendary patrons Star095, Brian Ulrich and Timofey for going above and beyond at supporting the channel. If you'd want to help the channel produce more Skyrim content, do consider joining the Patreon and gaining access to extra content. Right now I'm working on a fun Patreon exclusive video, which is something completely new, and I can't wait to get it done and show it to you. There have been people wanting to know my visual setup, so if you're one of them, I hope this video satisfied your needs. I recommend checking out my modding old textures video series for all the creatures, armors, and weapons and miscellaneous mods I'm using if you're still craving for more. Again, thank you for watching, and check out the description box for all the links to the mods, my technical details, and full mod list link. If you enjoyed today's video, like and subscribe, you know the drill. See ya!